Science with Folly. Kia ora. Welcome to Science with Folly. Today we're looking at ionic substances, also known as ionic compounds. Now, ionic compounds are composed of cations and anions bonded together and arranged in a three-dimensional lattice. Remember, a cation is a positively charged ion and an anion is a negatively charged ion. And the key thing with ionic compounds is that, is that their bonding and structure is the cause of their physical and chemical properties. And you have to always be able to relate their physical and chemical properties to their bonding and structure. So it's the ionic bond which holds the ions together in an ionic compound. And an ionic bond is a strong electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions. So let's use the example of sodium chloride, NaCl. Sodium chloride has got a one-to-one -one ratio of sodium to chloride ions in a compound. And remember, the opposite charges pull them together. Sodium's got a positive charge, chloride's got a negative charge. Now if I have a lump of sodium chloride, which is just salt, it's not just one sodium ion and one chloride ion, there's millions and millions of them. And as I said, they're held together in what we call a three-dimensional lattice. Here's a 2D lattice. All the sodium ions are surrounded by chloride ions and vice versa. And if you look closely, you can see the sodium ions are touching the chloride ions, but they are not touching each other, because if they did touch each other, they would repel each other. This is a two-dimensional lattice, but if you can imagine, if I had layer upon layer upon layer, then that would make a three-dimensional lattice. Now you've got to know some key properties of ionic compounds. The first one is that they all have a high melting point. And why do they have a high melting point? Well, the reason is the force of attraction between anions and cations, which is the ionic bond, is very strong. And a lot of heat energy is needed to overcome those strong bonds and melt it. Secondly, is that ionic compounds are only soluble in polar solvents. For example, when you put salt into water, it dissolves. And the reason for this is that the water molecules are polar and their force of attraction between the water molecules and the ions that make up the salt is greater than the force of attraction between the cations and ions. And therefore, the water molecules pull the ions apart and they float around in solution. The third is that ionic compounds will only conduct electricity when they are molten or if they are dissolved in solution. And the reason for this, remember, is that for something to conduct electricity, it must have free charged particles. When an ionic compound is solid, the charged particles, which are the ions, are locked in position and cannot move. But when it's molten, they can move around and conduct the electricity, or if it's dissolved, they can also move around in solution and conduct electricity. The fourth property you gotta know about is that ionic compounds are hard. What that means is that it's hard to deform them. The bonding between the ions is really strong. And if you compress it, well, you can't compress it. And that's what hardness means. And lastly, ionic compounds are what we call brittle. What that means is that instead of deforming when a lot of force is applied, they will break. And why this is, as I'll show you. Here's my lattice. If I push this this way, you can see now that the two chloride ions and the two sodium ions line up. And what will happen? They will repel each other and the compound would break along that line. So the key point I want you to take away from this is that the properties of ionic compounds relates to their bonding and structure. So, good luck with your study. Ka kite anō. Science with folly. Science with folly. Was I meant to throw that salt over my left or, or right shoulder?